Hey collectors, Anthony from Hashes Nut here, and today we're going to take a look at two different sets from the Jada Nano Hollywood Rides. Uh, so one, the first one is Back to the Future, which uh, has each of the three movie cars, which is fantastic. Um, and, and you go, well, what's the other one? What's well, Transformers, which has uh, Bumblebee's Optimus Prime and Starscream. And uh, the reason why they're together, other than being from the same company in the same like scale or whatever, is if you may remember the crossover between Transformers and Back to the Future, so I thought this was uh, very inappropriate to have together. But when we get back, we're going to check these uh, six out. I would like to say before I get too far, these guys, okay, first off, die cast, which is awesome. These guys have some real heft to them. I, I don't know if you can hear it, but like... Starscream is the lightest, but I mean, they really, they have some weight. And uh, that is spectacular. Reminds me of the old days when toys weren't made of all plastic. So, um, as you see, we have the three DeLoreans and the three Transformers. And um, how do I go? You know what? I think what I'll do is just a lot of close-ups of how these guys look. And um, this is the first uh, Back to the Future car. And uh, the detail is, is decent. Uh, the wheels move. And uh, you, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of clearance so that obviously they can drive on a surface. So, I mean, for the classic DeLorean, this, this is a fantastic looking mini vehicle. Now, the difference between these and the micro machines that I have for Star Trek is these are die cast, those are plastic. So here is Back to the Future 2 DeLorean. You see a little bit of color change and the tires are in hover mode. So a clever workaround was that they um, they put on casters, little rollers underneath so you can still slide it around like it is a car. Uh, so it's hovering basically. Uh, you can't see it really well, but uh, let's, see, let's see if I can do it. Let's move these guys over and I'll grab a secondary light. And um, you can kind of see that it's not necessarily touching the ground with those tires. I, I can rock back and forth to get them to touch. But uh, that, that is actually fairly creative for a problem of how do you make this car look like a hovercraft. Uh, but uh, they did a good job of it. And then the nice details. You get, Mr. Fusion is black. It should be a white color, but I get it. It's awfully small. A dab of paint on. They would make them look puffy maybe. Be a little too much. But uh, that actually looks pretty cool. Then we get to the Back to the Future 3 car, and also it has the 50s tires on it. Although I swear those were white walls. But uh, it has the wooden case with the uh, tubes on it for the, the replacement time components. And uh, the back end actually looks like the back end from the second one. So really no changes there. But then they kind of went in the middle, or I'm sorry, on the first version with the... Uh, the um, I don't know what to call it, the blue tubey stuff, whatever they call those. So similarly, these between both, you notice there's no fusion, Mr. Fusion here, because uh, that's where, if you may remember in the original, Doc Brown put the nuclear fuel. So Mr. Fusion is, is garbage and recyclables and stuff. And of course, underneath, just like the first one, it's uh, generally the same, but uh, it's just super cool. Again, he rolls. And uh, here are, I'm going to put them in order here, here are all three of the Back to the Future cars in line. And we'll throw some light on them so you can see a little bit more detail. They are fantastic. Let's go to the front. It's the, very, I, I just love it so much. It is so cool. And then to the back. Yep, so that was the Back to the Future vehicles. And now let's move on to the Transformers. And uh, as always, you, you typically get what they call the, the uh, main characters, the, the big five, whatever. I mean, there's no Soundwave or Grimlock, and there's no Megatron here. Technically, it's big six if you count Grimlock. And um, they, they look pretty good. Here's Optimus. It has six wheels. Even has the Autobot symbol on the bottom. And uh, it's, it's a boxy cab, just the usual classic look. 
and uh, in lieu of his legs, I guess they give him his this little skirt bit that goes over the tires, which is fine. Uh, typically, the toys do that in a different way where they inset it into the leg. But, I mean, you don't have to worry about a uh, robot mode. These things don't transform. But uh, he looks pretty sleek. The smokestacks aren't too high, though, so they're, they're doing more of the classic G1 look for him. And, of course, he does roll. So that's pretty good. And then here is Bumblebee. It's a Volkswagen Beetle, so obviously this is licensed. I think Jada had a license for a number of vehicles, including the these here. And this might mean this is a Peterbilt, I think. I think this is what Optimus' cab was originally supposed to be. That might be true, because, I mean, obviously this one's an F-17, I think, or something like that, for Starscream. But um, classic bug, just uh, fantastic detail. Had a neighbor who had one across the street. Uh, so I got to look at these for every day for a few years. And uh, just look at that detail. I don't. Mine has some type of smooch on it. I don't. I don't. I don't know if it scratches or it has, feels bumpy. It could be it's just excess paint splash. Uh, even the VW symbol is is painted gray on the front here. So that's, that's some attention to detail. And then we go to Starscream. And Starscream <laughs> it has tires, which I, I guess the the gimmick is they all have to have the ability to roll. And uh, it's just, it looks really good. And you can see his his symbols are, are the correct way. And uh, you, you can actually see this guy being Starscream. You just, it, it screams Starscream. Oh man, he is so pretty. I, I kind of like the take on the, uh, the back exhaust jets. I don't know if that's, because in the toy, obviously his feet end where the back wings end. And uh, so I don't know if this is true to the vehicle or not. I mean, and if it isn't, maybe it's done to avoid a copyright. We're gonna have to go to the military and license out the vehicle for him, you know? But uh, it looks, it's just so cool. And uh, as I said before, he does roll. And uh, let's do a little bit of lighting on here and see, uh, check it out from the side here. It's so good, I mean, here's Optimus' symbol. Get him from the front. Starscream, and uh, here's from the back. You know, Bumblebee back there with that classic BW trunk. And uh, it's just very nicely done. So you're telling me there are no shields? Ah, uh, like no man. Well, what does it have? Like a groovy flux capacitor? And it can travel anywhere through time and space. Does it come in black? And uh, here they are, spinning on the table there. I didn't realize uh, Optimus was a bit longer. Of course, Starscream's a bit wider, and the cars are pretty much the same high, uh, length. Uh, I was going to pick up the G.I. Joe vehicles, but I was like, yeah, I don't want to get back into something I hadn't collected in over 40 years, anything G.I. Joe related. So, for your pass, but don't regret getting these things. These are fantastic. I will probably end up storing them with my Star Trek toys. Um, but definitely, uh, for, I think they retail for like six bucks for a set of three. That's, that's pretty decent for micro machines. Um, I, I know technically these aren't micro machines, but micro machines are doing a comeback. They even have play sets out now too. Uh, cause Hasbro of course owns micro machines. Anyway, let me know what you think about these figures. Fans of Back to the Future, fans of Transformers, leave a comment. Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.